my name is Sharon Freeman, and I am the author and publisher of a book entitled China, Africa, and the African Diaspora, and the subtitle is Perspectives. I want to focus on that word perspectives because although I'm the author, there are many contributors to this 430-page book that uh, we recently published, and although there are a lot of books on the subject of China and Africa, this book is like no other because what we did that differentiates this book from all the others is that we got perspectives from China, from Africa, and even from Africans in the diaspora in America. And that includes people like me as African Americans, but also many African immigrants. What these stakeholders told us is what really makes a difference about this book. You know what matters about China and Africa? It's really what people feel about it. You know, China changed the game of how development is being done in Africa. And it has a bearing on the hearts, the minds, the souls, and the outcomes for people in, in, in China and in Africa and in many places in the world. So we went to China, we talked to Chinese leaders in the government, to Chinese business people, we went to Africa, we did the same thing, we talked to leaders, we talked to small business people, and we did the same here. And what they told us is, is that China has made a huge difference in the development outcomes for Africa. And I would say in the main, the point of view is very positive across the board. But that does not mean there are not areas where there are some challenges. The challenge is helping Africans to be able to compete in business against the Chinese business firms. Uh, but at the relationship between, at the high level between the Chinese government and the African governments, I could say very clearly that the African leadership is very happy with the contributions that China is making to its development. That does not mean that the Africans aren't happy with the contributions other development partners have made. Although China appears to, right now, be focusing on what Africa cares about the most, on what its needs are at this particular time, which is infrastructure development. But don't make, that, uh, don't make an assumption that they're only focusing on infrastructure development or oil extraction, which many people think. In fact, from our point of view, uh, of all of the people who contributed to the book, we can see very clearly that China's in Africa for the long haul, and it's doing many things in many countries in Africa. As you may know, China invited the leadership of almost every country from Africa to China back in uh, 2006, and they struck deals with the leadership of all of these countries, and those deals involve China's uh, contribution in agriculture, in education, in healthcare. So it's not a simple relationship, it's a complex one. Importantly, what it is, is it's a relationship between human beings. So here again, what our book, China, Africa, and the African Diaspora does differently from other books is it focuses on the human dimensions of this interaction. And people talk about the feelings they have about the Chinese people. The Chinese talk about the feelings they have toward the African people. And so we learn a lot uh, from this, and we can see that the relationship is very meaningful, and it is setting an example about how to do development in different ways. And it is an example that the World Bank and development institutions are learning from, our own U.S. government is learning from. You know what? I, I love this book, not because I wrote it. In fact, this is my 18th book. I love this book because of the importance of the perspectives that were shared in the book. Let me, let me tell you about what I think are the top 10, although of course in 430 pages there are a lot of very interesting um, points of view and data and statistics about many of the, the uh, issues you may have heard about concerning China and Africa, but here are 10 that I don't think people often talk about, and this is what I want to focus on. One of the important lessons that we learn from the contributors in this book is that listening matters. We see that China has done a lot to learn from other countries very quickly and to adapt it to its own situation. 
And that's what they advise the Africans to do. They said, don't follow what we're doing. They'll try to follow our model. You know why? Because you can't. Our model is really about saving and hard work. And, and uh, it is something that, you know, you have to do yourself. Africans, you have to create your own model. But the Chinese have learned from many models in the world and they adapted it. So learning and listening is key. Another important lesson that we've, we've seen is that South-South experience matters. China and Africa share many things in common. And I'm not just talking about uh, the, the time that China uh, contributed to the independent causes of, of many African countries. China and Africa ex share many important uh, perspectives from the world. China has uh, faced feudalism and Africa has undergone colonialism and this gives them a kind of perspective uh, in the world that can make them, that makes them understand each other very deeply. We also see that there are challenges in the relationship and those challenges are mostly manifested uh, as we see African small businesses uh, finding it difficult to compete. We see other challenges and the weaknesses of the institutions of Africa to be able to control and manage not only Chinese investment in Africa, but the investment of others as well. When you see that customs departments, immigration departments, and others and standards are not, those institutions that are not sufficient to be able to control and manage the outside investment, this is a problem. But you know, we also see that there are a lot of opportunities. And, and one very interesting perspective here is that the African diaspora is one of those opportunities. We see that many who are living in America, in Canada, in the Caribbean, they see the change that the Chinese are helping to usher in into Africa, and they want to be a part of that. They say, how can we also be partners in this? How can we join together with the Chinese uh, to make greater investments in Africa? So there are many things going on, and I think the most important thing is that this is a beginning. It's not an end. That's why we want you to, to read this book, because we think that it will help you to understand this phenomenon more deeply, not just to believe in, in the myths that it's just one-sided. This is a well-balanced uh, set of perspectives that help explain, in fact, development. In fact, to know about China in Africa today is to understand development as it has happened in the last hundred years. After you read this book, you will know all about um, what it takes to, to uh, contribute to development. After you read this book, China, Africa, and the African Diaspora Perspectives, we are absolutely certain that you will have a much deeper and profound appreciation not only about China in Africa but about the whole process of development and what the Chinese have done to change the game to do development in a different way and you will see that it is having a big influence on the thinking of leaders in the US government the African government the Chinese government and also in development institutions this is a true game changer, and this book is going to explain exactly how the game is being changed. Please get it. You can get it from my website, www.aasbea.com. And I'm Dr. Sharon Freeman, author and publisher of the book. Thank you. You might wonder, why is it that I wrote this book? Well, I have uh, quite a lot of experience in China. In fact, I lived in Hong Kong for 12 years, and I first started working with the U.S. Trade Development Program then, which is now the U.S. Trade Development Agency. Subsequently, after living in China for 12 years, I started working with African countries and have now worked in over 40 African countries. So this book gives me an opportunity to help bridge these two worlds uh, and to bring uh, forth an understanding through the perspectives that are contributed by many people, many leaders in the world about their views concerning China's uh, impact in Africa 
and not only China's impact on Africa, but Africa's impact on China as well. And so this is a balanced set of perspectives. We're not trying to, to sell any point of view. We have many people who are stakeholders who are, are giving their honest points of view based on their experience. And those experiences are very rich. We have ambassadors, presidents of countries, leaders of nations, and business people and ordinary people who are here to share their perspectives in this book about what this relationship means, not only just between these, these countries, but also the impact of, of this relationship to um, influencing how development is done in other parts of the world. For instance, we have the former president of Botswana, the current president of Senegal, the former head of uh, Africa for the U.S. State Department, and on the Chinese side, we have the special envoy uh, to Africa, Ambassador Liu, and we have scholars from the Chinese Academy of Social Sciences, and many people who are very influential in setting policy because some fundamental things uh, have happened uh, in this relationship that really changes how development is done. And the whole world is looking at that. And we want you to have an insight into that as well. And that's why it's important for you to read this book. I guarantee you, if you read this book, you will understand development like you've never understood it before. Not just about China and Africa, but about the whole development game in the world today. This book incorporates hundreds of years of knowledge by many, many people who really know the facts. So please look at this book and you will be glad you did. We want this book to play an active, dynamic role in contributing to addressing uh, issues that are outstanding. So we don't stop with just writing the book. Uh, we are going all around the world to make sure that people read it, they understand it, and they do something about it that leads to a positive outcome for everybody. Now, one important thing that this book does is it debunks the myth that the relationship between China and Africa is simplistic. It's not. It's complicated. It has many facets, and it has a future. That's what's important. And in that future, as problems occur, we're absolutely certain that it is in everyone's interest to resolve those issues. Is everything perfect in the relationship? No. But does everybody have a stake in making sure that problems are resolved? Absolutely. And so I think that when you read this book, you will see that it's not possible to oversimplify this relationship that is between people who care very deeply about each other, whose histories are intertwined, and that go way back for hundreds and hundreds of years. So what this book does through contributing uh, perspectives of many people from the bottom of societies and from the top is that it sheds light on the relationship from many different angles. In other words, this gives you, you could say, a wide angle lens about what's involved in this relationship. And I think you'll see that what is involved is every possible human emotion, a broad range of political, social, and economic factors that have a bearing on this relationship. But it is a dynamic relationship, one that is changing every day and it is a relationship that is important for the continued growth, development, and advancement of Africa, and even for China. Because remember, China's in Africa for a reason. So just as China can help Africa, Africa can help China. That's what you call a win-win situation. And so it's a very exciting. I want you to pick up this book. You can get it from my website, www. AASBEA.com, and again, I'm Dr. Sharon Freeman. Thank you.